Sega Genesis, from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, at en.wikipedia.org. Recorded on August 6, 2019. There are two parts to this recording. This is the second part, which contains sections 2 through 6. Those topics are Section 2, Technical Specifications, Section 3, Library, Section 4, Add-ons, Section 5, Variations, Section 6, Legacy. Section 2, Technical Specifications. The main microprocessor is a 16-32-bit Motorola 68000 CPU clocked at 7.6 MHz. The console uses a Z-Log Z80 subprocessor, mainly used to control the sound hardware and provide backward compatibility with the master system. The system has 72 kilobytes of RAM, 64 kilobytes of video RAM, and can display up to 61 colors at once from a palette of 512. The games are in ROM cartridge format and inserted in the top. The system produces sound using a Yamaha YM2612FM synthesizer and a Texas Instruments SN76489PSG. The latter is integrated with the video display processor. The Z80 processor is primarily used to control both sound chips to produce stereo music and sound effects. Most revisions of the original system contain a discrete YM2612 and a separate YM7101 video display processor. The functionality of these two chips was later integrated into a single custom ASIC for the Model 2 and the later revisions. The back of the Model 1 console provides a radio frequency output port designed for use with antenna and cable systems and a specialized 8-pin DIN port, both of which provide video and audio output. Both outputs produce monophonic sound. A headphone jack on the front of the console produces stereo sound. On the Model 2, the DIN port, radio frequency output port, and headphone jack are replaced by a 9-pin mini DIN port on the back for composite video, RGB and stereo sound, and the standard RF switch. Earlier Model 1 consoles have a 9-pin extension port, although this was removed in later production runs and is absent in the Model 2. An edge connector on the bottom right of the console allows it to be connected to a peripheral. Section 2.1, Peripherals. The standard controller features a rounded shape, a directional pad, three main buttons, and a start button. Sega later released a six-button version in 1993. This pad is slightly smaller and features three additional face buttons, similar to the design of buttons on some popular arcade fighting games, such as Street Fighter II. The third model of the controller, MK1470, was released with the Genesis Model 3, with a switch between Normal, Turbo, and Slow while also having the mode button. Sega released a wireless version of the six-button controller, the remote arcade pad. The system is backward compatible with the Master System. The first peripheral released, the Power Base Converter, Master System Converter in Europe, allows Master System games to be played. A second model, the Master System Converter 2, was released only in Europe for use with the Mega Drive 2. Other peripherals were released to add functionality. The Menacer is a wireless infrared light gun peripheral used with compatible games. Other third parties created light gun peripherals for the Genesis, such as the American Laser Games Pistol and the Konami Justifier. Released for art creation software, the Sega Mega Mouse features three buttons and is only compatible with a few games, such as Eye of the Beholder. A foam-covered bat called the Batter Up and the TV Golf Golf Club were released for both the Genesis and SNES. In November 1993, Sega released the Sega Activator, 
an octagonal device that lies flat on the floor and was designed to translate the player's physical movements into game inputs. Special Champion Edition were adapted to support the peripheral. The device was a commercial failure, due mainly to its inaccuracy and its high price point. IGN editor Craig Harris ranked the Sega Activator the third worst video game controller ever made. Both EA and Sega released multi-taps to allow more than the standard two players to play at once. Initially, EA's version, the four-way play, and Sega's adapter, the team player, only supported each publisher's games. In response to complaints about this, Sega publicly stated, We have been working hard to resolve this problem since we learned of it. And that a new team player, which would work with all multi-tap games for the console, would be released shortly. Later games were created to work on both the four-way play and team player. Codemasters also developed the J-Cart system, providing two extra ports on the cartridge itself. Although the technology came late in the console's life and is only featured on a few games, Sega planned to release a steering wheel peripheral in 1994, and the Genesis version of Virtual Racing was advertised as being steering wheel compatible, but the peripheral was cancelled. Section 2.2 Network Services In its first foray into online gaming, Sega created Sega MegaNet, which debuted in Japan on November 3, 1990. Operating through a cartridge and a peripheral called the Mega Modem, this allowed Mega Drive players to play a total of 17 games online. A North American version dubbed Telegenesis was announced but never released, although a version was operated in Brazil starting in 1995. Another phone-based system, the Mega Answer, turned the Japanese Mega Drive into an online banking terminal. In 1994, Sega started the Sega Channel, a game distribution system using cable television services Time Warner Cable and TCI. Using a special peripheral, Genesis players could download a game from a library of 50 each month and demos for upcoming releases. Games were downloaded to internal memory and deleted when the console was powered off. The Sega Channel reached 250,000 subscribers at its peak and ran until July 31, 1998, well past the release of the Sega Saturn. In an effort to compete with Sega, third-party developer Catapult Entertainment created the X-Band, a peripheral which allowed Genesis players to engage in online competitive gaming. Using telephone services to share data, X-Band was initially offered in five U.S. cities in November 1994. The following year, the service was extended to the SNES, and Catapult teamed up with Blockbuster Video to market the service. But as interest in the service waned, it was discontinued in April 1997. Section 3. Library The Genesis Library was initially modest, but eventually grew to contain games to appeal to all types of players. The initial pack in-game was Altered Beast, which was later replaced with Sonic the Hedgehog in 1991. Top sellers included Sonic the Hedgehog, its sequel, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, and Disney's Aladdin. During development for the console, Sega Enterprises focused on developing action games, while Sega of America was tasked with developing sports games. A large part of the appeal of the Genesis library during the console's lifetime was the arcade-based experience of its games, as well as more difficult entries such as Echo the Dolphin, and sports games such as Joe Montana Football. Compared to its competition, Sega advertised to an older audience by hosting more mature games, including the uncensored version of Mortal Kombat. Initially, the Genesis suffered from limited third-party support due to its low market share and Nintendo's monopolizing practices. Notably, 
the arcade hit Street Fighter II by Capcom initially skipped the Genesis, instead only being released on the SNES. However, as the Genesis continued to grow in popularity, Capcom eventually ported a version of Street Fighter II to the system known as Street Fighter II Champion Edition that would go on to sell over a million copies. One of the biggest third-party companies to support the Genesis early on was Electronic Arts. Trip Hawkins, founder and then president of EA, believed the Genesis' faster drawing speed made it more suitable for sport games than SNES, and credits EA's success on the Genesis for helping catapult the EA sports brand. Another third-party blockbuster for the system was the port of the original Mortal Kombat. Although the arcade game was released on the SNES and Genesis simultaneously, the two ports were not identical. The SNES version looked closer to the arcade game, but the Genesis version allowed players to bypass censorship, helping make it more popular. In 1997, Sega of America claimed the Genesis had a software attach rate of 16 games sold per console, double that of the SNES. Section 3.1 Sega Virtual Processor On the Super NES, companies could add enhancement chips to cartridges to increase the console's capabilities and produce more advanced graphics. For example, the launch game Pilot Wings contained a digital signal processor. Later, the Super FX chip was designed to offload complex rendering tasks from the main CPU. It was first used in Star Fox, which renders 3D polygons in real time, and Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island demonstrated rotation, scaling, and stretching of individual sprites and manipulates large areas of the screen. Sega began working on an enhancement chip to compete with the Super FX, resulting in the Sega Virtua Processor. This chip enables the Genesis to render polygons in real time and provides an axis transformation unit that handles scaling and rotation. Virtual Racing, the only game released with this chip, runs at a significantly higher and more stable frame rate than similar games on the SNES. The chip was expensive to produce and increased the cost of the games that used it. At $100, US, Virtual Racing was the most expensive Genesis cartridge ever produced. Two other games, Virtua Fighter and Daytona USA, were planned for the Sega Virtua processor chip, but were instead moved into the Saturn's launch lineup. There were plans to sell the Sega Virtua processor chip as a separate upgrade module for the Genesis, but this module was never released. Section 4, Add-ons In addition to accessories such as Power Base Converter, the Genesis supported two add-ons that each support their own game libraries. The first is the Sega CD, known as the Mega CD in all regions except for North America, a compact disc-based peripheral that can play its library of games in CD-ROM format. The second is the Sega 32X, a 32-bit peripheral which uses ROM cartridges and serves as a pass-through for Genesis games. Sega produced a custom power strip to fit the peripheral's large AC adapters. Both add-ons were officially discontinued in 1996. Section 4.1 Sega CD In 1991, compact discs had gained in popularity as a data storage device for music and software, PCs and video game companies had started to make use of this technology. NEC had been the first to include CD technology in a game console with the release of the TurboGrafx CD add-on, and Nintendo was making plans to develop its own CD peripheral as well. Seeing the opportunity to gain an advantage over its rivals, Sega partnered with JVC to develop a CD-ROM add-on for the Genesis. Sega launched the Mega CD in Japan on December 1, 1991, initially retailing at 49,800 yen. 
The CD add-on was launched in North America on October 15, 1992 as the Sega CD, with a retail price of $299. US It was released in Europe as the Mega CD in 1993. In addition to greatly expanding the potential size of its games, this add-on unit upgraded the graphics and sound capabilities by adding a second, more powerful processor, more system memory, and hardware-based scaling and rotation similar to that found in Sega's arcade games. It provided battery-backed storage RAM to allow games to save high scores, configuration data, and game progress. Shortly after its launch in North America, Sega began shipping the Sega CD with the pack-in game Sewer Shark, a full-motion video, or FMV, game developed by Digital Pictures, a company that became an important partner for Sega. Touting the benefits of the CD's comparatively vast storage space, Sega and its third-party developers produced a number of games for the add-on that include digital video in their gameplay or as bonus content, as well as re-releasing several cartridge-based games with high-fidelity audio tracks. In 1993, Sega released the Sega CD2, a smaller and lighter version of the add-on designed for the Genesis 2, at a reduced price compared to the original. A limited number of games were later developed that both used the Sega CD and the Sega 32X add-ons. The Mega CD sold only 100,000 units during its first year in Japan, falling well below expectations. Although many consumers blamed the add-on's high launch price, it also suffered from a tiny software library. Only two games were available at launch. This was due in part to the long delay before Sega made its software development kit available to third-party developers. Sales were more successful in North America and Europe, although the novelty of FMV and CD-enhanced games quickly wore off as Many of the system's later games were met with lukewarm or negative reviews. In 1995, Sega announced a shift in focus to its new console, the Saturn, and discontinued all advertising for Genesis hardware, including the Sega CD. The add-on sold 2.24 million units worldwide. Section 4.2 Sega 32X with the release of the Sega Saturn slated for 1995, Sega began to develop a stopgap solution that would bridge the gap between the Genesis and the Saturn, and would serve as a less expensive entry into the 32-bit era. At the Winter Consumer Electronics Show in January 1994, Sega of America research and development head Joe Miller took a phone call from Nakayama in which Nakayama stressed the importance of coming up with a quick response to the Atari Jaguar. One potential idea for this came from a concept from Sega Enterprises, later known as Project Jupiter, an entirely new independent console. Project Jupiter was initially slated to be a new version of the Genesis, with an upgraded color palette and a lower cost than the upcoming Saturn as well as with some limited 3D capabilities thanks to the integration of ideas from the development of the Sega Virtua processor chip. Miller suggested an alternative strategy, citing concerns with releasing a new console with no previous design specifications within six to nine months. At the suggestion from Miller and his team, Sega designed the 32X as a peripheral for the existing Genesis expanding its power with two 32-bit Super H2 processors. The SH2 had been developed in 1993 as a joint venture between Sega and Japanese electronics company Hitachi. At the end of the Consumer Electronics Show, with the basic design of the 32X in place, Sega Enterprises invited Sega of America to assist in development of the new add-on. Although the new unit was a stronger console than originally proposed, it was not compatible with Saturn games. Before the 32X could be launched, the release date of the Saturn was announced for November 1994 in Japan, 
coinciding with the 32X's target launch date in North America. Sega of America now was faced with trying to market the 32X with the Saturn's Japan release occurring simultaneously. Their answer was to call the 32X a transitional device between the Genesis and the Saturn. This was justified by Sega's statement that both platforms would run at the same time, and that the 32X would be aimed at players who could not afford the more expensive Saturn. The 32X was released in November 1994, in time for the holiday season. Demand among retailers was high, and Sega could not keep up with orders for the system. More than 1 million orders had been placed for 32X units, but Sega had only managed to ship 600,000 units by January 1995. Launching at about the same price as a Genesis console, the price of the 32X was less than half of what the Saturn's price would be at launch. Though positioning the console as an inexpensive entry into 32-bit gaming, Sega had a difficult time convincing third-party developers to create games for the new system. After an early run on the peripheral, news soon spread to the public of the upcoming release of the Sega Saturn, which would not support the 32X's games. The Saturn was released on May 11, 1995, four months earlier than its originally intended release date of September 2, 1995. The Saturn, in turn, caused developers to further shy away from the console and created doubt about the library for the 32X, even with Sega's assurances that there would be a large number of games developed for the system. In early 1996, Sega conceded that it had promised too much out of the 32X and decided to stop producing the system in order to focus on the Saturn. Prices for the 32X dropped to 99 US dollars and cleared out of stores at 1995. Section 5 Variations More than a dozen licensed variations of the Genesis Mega Drive have been released. In addition to models made by Sega, alternate models were made by other companies, such as Majesco Entertainment, At Games, JVC, Pioneer Corporation, Amstrad, and Iowa. A number of bootleg clones were created during its lifespan. Section 5.1 First Party Models In 1993, Sega introduced a smaller, lighter version of the console known as the Mega Drive 2 in Japan, Europe, and Australia, and simply sold as Genesis without the Sega prefix in North America. This version omits the headphone jack in the front, replaces the AV out connector with a smaller version that supports stereo sound, and provides a simpler, less expensive mainboard that requires less power. Sega released a combined, semi-portable Genesis Sega CD unit called the Genesis CDX, marketed as the Multi-Mega in Europe. This unit retailed at $399.95 in the U.S., roughly $100 more than the individual Genesis and Sega CD units put together, since the Sega CD dropped its price to $229 half a year before, and was bundled with Sonic CD, Sega Classics Arcade Collection, and the Sega CD version of Echo the Dolphin. The CDX features a small LCD screen that, when the unit is used to play audio CDs, displays the current track being played. With this feature and the system's lightweight build, weighing 2 pounds, Sega marketed it in part as a portable CD player. Late in the 16-bit era, Sega released a handheld version of the Genesis called the Genesis Nomad. Its design was based on the Mega Jet, a Mega Drive portable unit featured on airplane flights in Japan. As the only successor to the Game Gear, the Nomad operates on six AA batteries, displaying its graphics on a 3.25 inch or 8.25 millimeter LCD screen. The Nomad supports the entire Genesis library, but cannot be used with the Sega 32X, the Sega CD, 
or the power base converter. Exclusive to the Japanese market was the Terra Drive, a Mega Drive combined with an IBM PC compatible computer. Sega also produced three arcade system boards based on the Mega Drive the System C2, the Mega Tech, and the Mega Play, which support approximately 80 games combined. Section 5.2 Third Party Models Working with Sega Enterprises, JVC released the Wonder Mega on April 1, 1992, in Japan. The system was later redesigned by JVC and released as the XI in North America in September 1994. Designed by JVC to be a Genesis and Sega CD combination with high quality audio, the Wonder Mega's high price, $500 at launch, kept it out of the hands of average consumers. The same was true of the Pioneer Laser Active, which requires an add-on known as the Mega LD Pack, developed by Sega, in order to play Genesis and Sega CD games. Although the Laser Active was lined up to compete with the 3DO Interactive Multiplayer, the combined price of the system and the Mega LD Pack made it a prohibitively expensive option for Sega players. Iwa released the CSD GM1, a combination Genesis Sega CD unit built into a boombox. Several companies added the Mega Drive to personal computers, mimicking the design of Sega's Terra Drive. These include the MSX models AX330 and AX990, distributed in Kuwait and Yemen, and the Amstrad Mega PC, distributed in Europe and Australia. After the Genesis was discontinued, Majesco Entertainment released the Genesis 3 as a budget version in 1998. In 2009, At Games began producing two new variations, the Firecore, which can play original Genesis cartridges as well as preloaded games, and a handheld console preloaded with 20 Genesis games. Companies such as Radica Games have released various compilations of Genesis and Mega Drive games in plug-and-play packages resembling the system's controller. Section 5.3 Re-Release and Emulation A number of Genesis and Mega Drive emulators have been produced, including Gen M, KGen, Genesis, VGen, Storm, and Gens. The GameTap subscription gaming service included a Genesis emulator and had several dozen licensed Genesis games in its catalog. The Console Classics subscription gaming service includes an emulator and has several hundred Genesis games in its catalog. Compilations of Genesis games have been released for other consoles. These include Sonic Mega Collection and Sonic Gems Collection for PS2, Xbox, and Nintendo GameCube, Sega Genesis Collection for PS2 and PSP, and Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection, known as the Sega Mega Drive Ultimate Collection in PAL territories, for PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. During his keynote speech at the 2006 Game Developers Conference, Nintendo President Satoru Iwata announced that Sega would make a number of Genesis Mega Drive games available to download on the Wii's Virtual Console. There are select Genesis games available on the Xbox 360 through Xbox Live Arcade, such as Sonic the Hedgehog and Sonic 2, as well as games available via the PlayStation Network and Steam. Section 5.4 Later Releases on May 22, 2006, North American company Super Fighter Team released Beggar Prince, a game translated from a 1996 Chinese original. It was released worldwide and was the first commercial Genesis game released in North America since 1998. Super Fighter Team would later go on to release two more games for the system, Legend of Wukong and Star Odyssey. In December 2010, 
Watermelon, an American company, released Peer Solar and The Great Architects, the first commercial role-playing video game specifically developed for the console since 1996, and the biggest 16-bit game ever produced at 64 megabytes. Peer Solar is the only cartridge-based game which can optionally use the Sega CD to play an enhanced soundtrack and sound effects disc. In 2013, independent programmer Future Driver, inspired by the Disney film Wreck-It Ralph, developed Fix-It Felix Jr. for the Genesis. On December 5, 2007, Tectoy released a portable version of the Genesis Mega Drive with 20 built-in games. Another version called Mega Drive Guitar Idol comes with two six-button joypads and a guitar controller with five fret buttons. The Guitar Idol game contains a mix of Brazilian and international songs. The console has 87 built-in games, including some from Electronic Arts based on the mobile phone versions. It was announced that Tectoy has developed a new Genesis console that not only looks almost identical to the original model of the Genesis, but also has a traditional cartridge slot and SD card reader, due for release in June 2017. In 2009, Chinese company At Games produced a Genesis Mega Drive compatible console, the FireCore. It features a top loading cartridge slot and includes two controllers similar to the six button controller for the original Genesis. The console has 15 games built in and is region free, allowing cartridge games to run regardless of their region. At Games produced a handheld version of the console. Both machines have been released in Europe by distributing company Blaze Europe. In 2018, Sega announced a micro console, the Genesis Mega Drive Mini. It will include 40 games including Gunstar Heroes and Castlevania Bloodlines, with different games for different regions, and a Save Anywhere function. Streets of Rage composer Yuzo Koshiro will provide the menu music. The console is planned for release on September 19, 2019. Section 6. Legacy The Genesis has often ranked among the best video game consoles. In 2009, IGN named it the fifth best video game console, citing its edge in sports games and better home versions of Mortal Kombat and lauding what some consider to be the greatest controller ever created, the six button. In 2007, game trailers named the Genesis as the sixth best console of all time in their list of top 10 consoles that left their mark on the history of gaming, noting its great games and solid controller, and writing of the glory days of Sonic the Hedgehog. In January 2008, technology columnist Don Reisinger proclaimed that the Genesis created the industry's best console war to date, citing Sonic the Hedgehog, superior sports games, and backward compatibility with the Sega Master System. In 2008, Gaming Excellence ranked it 6th of the 10 best consoles, declaring one can truly see the genesis for the gaming milestone it was. At the same time, Game Daily rated it 9th of 10 for its memorable games. In 2014, US gamers Jeremy Parrish wrote, if the Atari generation introduced video games as a short-lived 70s fad, and the NES generation established it into an enduring obsession for the young, Sega's Genesis began pushing the medium towards something resembling its contemporary form, expounding that the system served as the key incubator for modern sports franchises, made consoles truly international, by providing Western third parties previously put at a disadvantage by Nintendo's restrictive licensing policies with a more profitable alternative, created an online subscription service that foreshadowed 
PlayStation Plus more than 15 years early with the Sega Channel and played a key role in ensuring the vitality and future of the games industry by breaking Nintendo's near monopolistic hold on the US and awakening the UK to the merits of television gaming. For his part, Kalinsky highlighted Sega's role in developing games for an older demographic and pioneering the concept of the street date with the simultaneous North American and European release of Sonic the Hedgehog 2. John Stepanek of Retro Gamer noted it was a system where the allure was born not only of the hardware and games, but the magazines, playground arguments, climate, and politics of the time. Sega of America's marketing campaign for the Genesis was widely emulated, influencing marketing in the subsequent generation of consoles. For all 187 references and notes, please check the article on Wikipedia at en dot wikipedia dot org this sound file and all text included in the article are licensed under the creative commons attribution share like license available at creative commons dot org